on July 2nd, 2018, on the very day of the anniversary of our Declaration of Independence, I began a fast, a fast to pray and fast for America. And what my prayer was is that the corruption, the deceit, the lying, the murdering that is going on in our government, the corruption and the propaganda that is going on through the media, that it would be exposed, fully exposed, and that God would judge these very things that are, are tearing America down, tearing America apart. Two years before, in 2016, I really thought that the, the media was doing its regular propaganda job, and it looked so perfect that all of what I considered to be legitimate candidates for the Republican nomination for the United States of America were being systematically ignored or torn down, and Donald Trump was being exalted. Even though he had plenty of money, they were giving him a free pass, and he was being exalted as the answer, even though there are a lot of never-Trumpers, yet the media kept on pumping him up until the day that he got the nomination. Then the media, the comedians on every channel and every network started tearing him apart immediately. And so it looked, this is perfect. This whole thing was a setup right from the very beginning that the globalist, the atheist socialist that have gotten control of this country and the media, they are going to exalt and they're going to bring up the only person that, that the, the most deceitful and probably the, the highest body count of any politician in history had racked up that, that she would have a chance, and not only a chance, but because of the FBI investigation that was prejudged, that she would be given a pass and she would be able to beat this one person that the media was now tearing apart. When it came to the time of the election, uh, I have to be honest, uh, and uh, I have to confess my sin on this, that I did not vote for Donald Trump. I did vote against Hillary Rodham Clinton, but I felt that the thing was a setup from right the, at the very beginning, and I went to bed that night early to go to sleep because I did not want to endure the pain of what appeared to be the inevitable uh, destruction of America as the globalists finally put the, the, the stranglehold the rest of the way on America. It had already been set up. We already had uh, uh, the uh, Muslim Brotherhood that was initiated in through Brennan and uh, the CIA bringing in people uh, that were, were Muslim and Muslim Brotherhood uh, to, to positions of authority in the United States. It looked like the whole thing was set up to finally to destroy America and bring us under the Novus Ordo Seclorum, the New World Order, while the Clintons uh, were able to enrich themselves by the millions and by the billions uh, by selling out uh, America through the State Department, through the Uranium One deal, and through all the other corruption that was going on, even into the uh, the rebuilding of Haiti, which you know uh, people involved were were found to be in pedophile rackets, and uh, and so when I when I went to bed that night. I really was expecting the worst and to wake up in the morning and, and to know that America was done. That all the, the, uh, the, the murders that were done and, and uh, the, 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 the individual, the young man that leaked the emails from the, the DNC to WikiLeaks, uh, who had been uh, murdered, or excuse me, who had been, uh, who had been killed, um, because of uh, his complicity in, in that uh, leaking. Uh, when all this st stuff came out, I thought there's no way that it's ever going to be exposed. America is done. When I woke up in the morning and heard out of Costa Rica, the news came uh, that Donald Trump was the president, I, I really couldn't believe it, but I knew that still, this is all just a setup. That is what I, I really felt. And uh, now, I, within the next couple days, 
I then decided, okay, I'm going to take a look and see what this guy is all about. And so I clicked on a YouTube video. It was like 35 minutes of insults from Donald Trump. And I listened to that and I thought, I can't believe this man is saying this. I've heard what the media has been reporting that he's talking about, but I cannot believe that he is actually exposing what he is exposing. And then I I went to other things and to hear what was going on, and I realized this man knows what is going on. He knows about the plan to destroy America and to bring it and to break down all uh, nationalities and bring us all into a new world order. And this is what has been going on for decades. And he is saying this. So I immediately began praying for Donald Trump to to at least live until the inauguration because I figured that he was gonna be killed beforehand. There is no way that the media and the powers that be, with FBI, the CIA, all that we know now is involved in, in in this takeover of America. There's no way that they're gonna let this man survive. And so I began praying that he would live. And then I found out that there were others Uh, for a long time and some for years have been praying uh, for this man because he really did know and articulate what was going on, but we're not hearing any of it through the media. But having lived in Israel for 20 years, the most popular bumper sticker in Israel for decades was CNN Lies. It's just, if you live there, you know what's going on, and then when you hear what CNN is doing, you know that these guys, are. this is pure propaganda, they cannot possibly tell the truth. I don't know if it's been revoked, but I had a top security clearance with the State Department uh, because I was with Marine Security Guard Battalion, and one of the things that they are very careful about, the State Department was all about, is investigating at a great expense, Uh, back then it was only 10,000, now it's uh, 25,000, dollars for the clearance. And so now we, we see that those reporting the news are those people that even according to the State Department, the corrupt State Department would recognize that these people can all be compromised and they can be turned to report whatever it is that the New World Order wants them to report. So this time on July 2nd, beginning this fast, is a very serious fast. And I began walking between three and five miles a day, fasting and listening to Derek Prince. Derek Prince, I consider to be the teacher of this generation. He's not a copycat, he's not, you know, this is a man I I know and consider to be one of the great teachers and spiritual leaders in this generation because he got his messages from the throne room. And his teaching on prayer and fasting, I listened to over and over and over again because I needed to get my head and my heart right. Because ladies and gentlemen, we are at the crossroads in this country and unless we step up and live according to what the prophet Jeremiah revealed, we are going to be in the state of destruction. As a matter of fact, unless we do what the scriptures tell us to do, as priests and kings, unless we take our authority, America is done. It's over with. And so I began my prayer, my fasting, and my walking. 30 days later, I was going to be in Los Angeles addressing a group of uh, of Chinese believers, people that came from mainland China, from Taiwan, from Hong Kong, others who had been here in America. But this is very important to me because Isaiah tells us that the Chinese are going to be uh, very much instrumental, very instrumental in bringing Israel back from the four winds of heaven uh, to their land in the last days, a prophecy that has not yet been fulfilled. 
and I know that I've been put in this loop and we are now producing our programs, and the very first one is a series on Revelation for the Chinese people. And you will also be able to see uh, me speaking fluent Mandarin Chinese uh, in the, as I teach the book of Revelation. But I'm going out there because I know this is important, and so I'm not only praying and fasting for America, I'm praying and fasting for this divine appointment that uh, is set up. I had been asked by uh, Paul Shea, who I know to, to be an apostle. Uh, and I know he's an apostle because he'd never call himself one, but he is a sent one. He is sent by the Almighty. He is, uh, has been sent to open the doors in China, in Taiwan, to get uh, this message out through the biggest uh, Christian network in the world, which is Good TV, uh, and also to minister to the Chinese people. And so when he asked me to come out and to teach on the, the chronology of the Gospels, uh, and changing it from the book of Revelation, I knew that I needed to hear his voice because he is the one that is sent, and I am sent to help him to get the gospel of the kingdom out to the Chinese people. So it is during this, this time that I'm walking and praying that I recalled that Many years ago, I swore to protect and defend the, United St uh, the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And though the domestic enemies far outnumber the foreign enemies at this point in time. The domestic enemies, who are the atheists, who do not believe in God or God-given rights, and want a totalitarian government to, that, that is unimpeachable and cannot, it, it does not answer to anyone except for they themselves. This was what was taking and putting the stranglehold on all of America. And so I began to, to pray and to fast and to then, I went to Shaul, to Paul's letter to Timothy, because this is what came up. In 1 Timothy, 118, we read, this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy. This charge, this is, this, these are the orders that I'm, I'm giving to you. I'm committing this to you, Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee. The prophecies that went before on him, his ordination specified this, and he call, recalls this, that you might, by these prophecies that were put on you at the time of your ordination, that you might war a good warfare. He was called as a warrior, not a flesh and blood warrior, but a spiritual warrior. And the spiritual warrior, there are responsibilities that reach into the physical world because of this. He was called to be a warrior. I recall a few years ago that we did the Open Door series with Nehemiah Gordon. And at Hanukkah, we called together the Hanukites, the warriors who have dedicated themselves. And at that very thing, we publish the good tidings, the good news of standing against the ban. It was one of Nehemiah's uh, great, great, great grandfathers that it not only enforced the ban, reinforced the ban against the pronunciation of the name of Yehovah and keeping it from the world. And the document that he wrote that was then later published this was what, what, what was found, that the name was not only known, but it was quieted. It was held in strict confidence by the rabbis. It was banned by the rabbis. But Nehemiah Gordon, who had a desire, an earnest desire to know the name, grew up speaking Hebrew, went to Hebrew University, became an, an editor on the Dead Sea Scrolls publication project, as well as one of the editors on the Aleppo Codex, a one who can read uh, uh, ancient Hebrew handwriting with, uh, with absolute fluidity. 
He was the one that laid it out that we are going to stand against this ban that one of his forefathers put in place. That the Almighty said that I brought you out of Egypt with a mighty hand so that the whole world will know that my name is Yehovah. And his name appears nearly 7,000 times in the Hebrew text of the Bible, but not but once in the English versions of the Bible. We took a stand and we said, we are gonna fight as warriors, as Hanukkah warriors, and stand against that ban. Now, this last year, as of this last year, now more than 1,000 ancient Hebrew manuscripts with all the vowel pointings, yod Hey vav Hey, with the vowel pointings that let us know beyond a shout of that out that his name is Yehovah, that the Israelites and the Jews understood his name is to be Yehovah, and where I got involved, ladies and gentlemen, is that I had to know from heaven, is this the right answer? I'm not asking for a dream or anything. No, we got together as a staff on the morning in which we had the news that the cousin of one of our staff members uh, was in a coma, that she was going to be unplugged, that she was brain dead and had been brain dead for days. They had her body on ice, they were going to harvest her organs and this was it. So we gathered around in our our, our great room uh, where we have the coffee, we held hands and I asked the God of heaven in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, that if he wanted me to proclaim his name as Yehovah, as all the evidence uh, existed at that time, and I could not deny it, but having a, a, a million and one videos that say and, and call his name Yahweh, I had to know and I asked that if this is true, that if his name is Yehovah, and if he wanted me to take this on and to stand against that ban, that I'm asking you to reach down from heaven and to heal this woman who has been brain dead and on ice and they're going to harvest her organs. We prayed for that very miracle that it would be a testimony to us and a, then a testimony to her family. The next day, we got the message that they wanted to warm her body up so that her two-year-old son would not have to say goodbye to an ice-cold mother. And so they warmed her body up her two-year-old son came in and kissed her on the cheek. She opened her eyes, and a week later, she walked out of the hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't care what you think or where you have gone in, in your life and in your experience, but from taking that stand, the Almighty has blessed us and we are moving into other languages and his name is going out around the world through this ministry. And that is what I asked for. I'm not asking for millions, I'm just asking for him to make known his will so that we can be faithful to do what we are supposed to do in making his name throughout the world. And then, after that, within two years, Nehemiah and the other Hanukkah warriors who took the stand at that time then reported that we now have more than 1,000 ancient Hebrew manuscripts with yod Hey vav Hey, with all three vowels, and this is a photograph from the Aleppo Codex itself, and ladies and gentlemen, this is what we are getting out and getting out to the world. Now, we've got another fight. We've got another warfare. And just as Timothy was charged that he would fight a good fight, that he would go to war in his generation, holding fast to faith and a good, a pure conscience, which some, some having put away concerning the faith, they've, they've been made a shipwreck. And he said, of whom is, and he names him, Hymenaeus and Alexander, who I, Paul, delivered to Satan that they might learn not to blaspheme. 
Ladies and gentlemen, now is the time that we are going to go to war. We're going to call them out like Hymenaeus and Alexander. We are going to call those out and we are going to deliver them to Satan. We are going to ask Almighty God, Yehovah, to, to defend his name, defend his people, and destroy those destroyers of the earth, those who are destroying the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a time that we go to war, and we're not gonna pull any punches anymore. It's time to name names and name the names before Yehovah in heaven. Because when we call upon his name, Yehovah, he is the one who will save us. This is what we're entreating the Almighty for. Yehovah, Yehovah, we call upon you, we entreat you to bring judgment in our nation, to bring judgment upon those in positions of authority that some of them of which we have elected, who have forsaken that holy oath, and they have forsaken you, and we are asking for judgment to come down on them. We are asking for you to bring judgment in our justice system, in the Department of Justice. May your justice be brought down with a mighty, mighty hand. We pray that your justice and your judgment, Yehovah, is brought down upon our religious system. We pray that it's brought down upon the so-called intelligence agencies who have destroyed our Constitution and have destroyed people and have targeted innocent people we ask that you bring judgment down upon the Medical Association and, and those in Congress for the murder of millions of innocent babies in America. We ask that you bring your judgment down on them so that it does not come down on all of America. We ask you to expose it in every area. In the name of Yeshua, we're asking you we know that if we ask anything according to your name and according to your will that you will do it. And we know that it is your will that we lead a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. So we are entreating you. As Paul said to Timothy, entreat, entreat, supplications, entreaty be made to God in prayers, in intercession, and giving of thanks because we are standing on the shoulders of giants. We are living in an abundant and prosperous land, and Yehovah, our God, we are so thankful that you have allowed us the absolute abundance, the affluence, not for ourselves, but so that we can get your word out to the rest of the world, so that we can do our responsibility. We do not take it lightly. We do not ask to, to live and die comfortably. We ask that at the end of our life that we get to hear on the sea of fire and glass, good job, well done. Like Jeremiah, we're not asking that you keep us out of prison and out of the dung pits and that you keep us from seeing the evil that, that, that is going to come upon our nation. We're not asking for that. We're asking that you deliver your people. And like you delivered Jeremiah in the end, we ask for your deliverance. We are asking you on behalf of kings and all those who are in authority because we are the one that elect those who are in authority in this nation. And so on behalf of them, we ask that you clear the path for them so that they can make righteous laws, that they can repeal these damnable laws. We ask you that you give them the authority, and that you give them the backbone of steel to stand up against the perversion. We ask you to expose the perversion so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. This is what we are asking. We like to live a peaceable life, but we want it to be godly. We want it to be honest. And so that is why we're asking you to rain down your judgment upon those in the Department of Justice, 
those in the FBI, the CIA, and those rogues in the NSA, and what, yet we are thankful for those in the NSA, in the military, who do have a backbone of steel and are standing up against this and want to see America saved. We ask you to energize them, and this, we are going to go to you on a daily basis. We are not going to go to you and just, you know, platitudes about, uh, about praying for our leaders, no. Expose the evil, Yehovah, Almighty God, expose the evil, this is what our hope is. Our hope is in you, not in Donald Trump, not in our government, not in our justice system, you are the Almighty Judge, and we are asking this in the name of Yeshua, amen. To understand the context of the prophecies of Jeremiah, we must go back into the Chronicles of the Kings to set the conditions to which, into which Jeremiah was then put by the Almighty. It was a lecture that was done by the professor of psychology at Toronto, uh, Jordan Peterson, uh, who made a brilliant statement. He said, the Bible, is a hyperlinked text. As Soon as he said it, I saw it. It's like, here it is, the blue underlined words, and it's like nearly every word, every phrase is hyperlinked to a different part of the Bible that if you don't know the, uh, the hyperlink and you cannot go to the Wikipedia of what this is talking about, you are forever lost. And so that's where I actually started my seminar uh, to the Chinese out in LA. Because the book of Revelation, to understand the book of the Revelation, to understand the fifth verse, one sentence out of the fifth verse, you have to understand the entirety of the Gospels. Not the so-called gospel message as it is you know, commonly thought of in Western Gentile churchianity. No, you have to understand what Yeshua was doing as he stood against the religious system of his day, as he vehemently violated all the rules and regulations of the Pharisees with every miracle that he did. You have to understand that, but then it goes back even further than that. You have to go all the way back to Exodus 19. In Exodus 19, that is where the hyperlink text begins, and you have to understand the next 20 chapters, and then you can understand one sentence in the fifth verse of Revelation chapter one. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go into the book of Jeremiah, but in order to understand how it applies to this generation, we have got to go back to the book of Jeremiah and its hyperlinked text, which is in the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel and Judah. Now we go to the book of Jeremiah, uh, chapter one, verse one. The words of Jeremiah, Ben Hilkiah, the son of Hilkiah, one of the priests that were in Enotote in the land of Benjamin. To whom, so he was just one of the priests in the land of Benjamin, the area of Benjamin, which is uh, uh, north of the, the, the wall of Jerusalem. And it says, uh, to whom the word of Yehovah came in the 13th year of the reign of King Josiah. Now, Josiah, as we find out in the text uh, of the Chronicles, that Josiah was eight years of age when he was made king of Israel. His 13th year, he is now 21 years old, and this is when the word of Yehovah first came to Jeremiah, and he states this. Now, now this, this king, Josiah, he was named and his role in government was prophesied before his birth. A generation before his birth, he was not only named, but what he would do was prophesied, and Jeremiah is going to be part of that prophecy. So Jeremiah's ministry, and this first revelation came to him when he 
was about, it was about 40 years before the destruction of the temple. And of course, Jeremiah was going to be in prison, incarcerated in Jerusalem at the time that Nebuchadnezzar attacks and levels Jerusalem, levels the, the temple, and Nebuchadnezzar uh, and uh, his, uh, his army carries away Judah into captivity. So th this happens, the first revelation happens at, at this time, the 13th year of Josiah, and it says, in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, until the fifth month of the 11th year of Zedekiah, which was the carrying away of Jerusalem captive. And so we have this entire period of time that is going to be encapsulated with his prophecies. And Jeremiah doesn't tell us what happens in Israel because of his faithful stand. He just tells us what the message is, and this message is rough. And what he is told is very difficult. So it says in verse four, beginning at that time, which is of course the 13th year of Josiah's reign, the word of Jehovah came to me and said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. So this is a revelation to him. This is a revelation to Jeremiah. Before you were born, before you were even formed in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I sanctified you. I set you apart. And I ordained you. This is going to be your life. You are going to be a gift to my people. They may not like the gift, but this is what gift ministries are all about. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. That's not a gift to the individual. That person, his life is a gift to the body of believers. And he has been ordained as a prophet, a spokesman for the Most High, not only to Israel, but to the nations. And when the Almighty said that to him, Jeremiah replied, ah, Lord, Yehovah, behold, look it, I, I can't speak. I'm a child, I, I'm an idiot. I, I'm not prepared for this. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. And he said, Yehovah said, don't say that you're a child. You are going to go to all that I send you. That's your job. So don't argue with me. I've set you apart for this. And whatsoever I command you, that is what you're gonna speak. So don't worry about what you think you know or what you don't know, or that your education is, is not equivalent for this. For I am going to be with you to deliver you. Now, he doesn't promise that everything is gonna go rosy. He just says that he'll be with him to deliver him. And that deliverance doesn't come until after the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple, and he's been mired in sewage up to his armpits. He said, then Yehovah put forth his hand, and this is what he sees in the vision. Yehovah putting forth his hand and touching his mouth. And he said, I have put my words in your mouth. He gives them the vision and says, I have put my words in your mouth and touches his mouth. See, look, I have this day set you over nations and over kingdoms to root out those grubbing, filthy politicians and religious leaders to pull down their strongholds and everything, all the facades they put up and all the protection they put up so in protecting each other so that nobody can prosecute them and all the judges they set up so that nobody can touch them and all the graft and corruption they pay in the millions and billions so that nobody can come after them and how they pervert the justice system and pay all people in the justice system to write exoneration letters before any investigation is done. You're gonna pull all this stuff down. You're going to destroy their strongholds. You're gonna throw it down to where there is nothing, they have nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. That is your job. 
I'm gonna stand with you and I am going to cause this to happen. That is Jeremiah's generation. That's the generation that needs to stand up and call on the Almighty in his name, Yehovah, and cause it to happen now. This is our last chance, ladies and gentlemen. I am not kidding you. This is our last chance, or you can flush the toilet on America, you can kiss your grandchildren goodbye because they're gonna be fodder, they're gonna be cannon fodder, they're gonna be dust in the field if this thing goes down the way that the new world order wants it to go down. And after you tear it down, then you're gonna build and then you're gonna plant. You're gonna, you're gonna sow things for the future. And Jeremiah is given such specific detail, even as Nebuchadnezzar Dan's siege engines was knocking down the walls and his army was ready to invade the Temple Mount, as Jeremiah was given instructions by Yehovah Almighty to hide, to take the Ark of the Covenant, the Tabernacle of David, and the Articles of Furniture and hide them away in a cave for the future. Just as Jeremiah told Baruch his scribe to take title deeds of a parcel of land that Jeremiah bought from Hannah Mila's cousin and to then bury it in that parcel of land so, because it was in the future, that was all gonna be built again. He was planting in the land a testimony for the last days that is yet to be unearthed. He had prophesied about in the last days, things that were going to be uncovered concerning the Ark of the Covenant, and he's gonna give us incredible detail on that. And in verse 11, Moreover, the word of Yehovah came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? So he gives him another vision. And he said, I see a, the rod of an almond tree, shikade, almond tree, shikade. I see the rod of the branch of a shikade. Then Yehovah said unto me, you have well seen, for I will shikad, I will watch over my word to perform it. This revelation that Jeremiah is given, the Almighty is teaching him how he will communicate to him by showing him a picture and then telling him what the picture means. This will go through the entire book of Jeremiah, through the entire scroll, over and over. He's gonna say, what do you see? I see a, 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 a basket full of rotten, nasty figs with flies and maggots in it. What does it mean? Then he gives them the interpretation. Over and over, and this is how the Almighty gives revelation. The visions continue on, and he is going to be given a revelation that is going to shake the nation of Israel. I'd like to close in prayer. Yehovah, we have called upon you. And every time this message is played and every time someone watches this, I am asking that they will, will bow their head and bow their heart and humble themselves and drop to their knees and, and, and ask you to bring judgment and your justice that the evil that is in not only America, but around the world, those who would destroy this nation and those who would exalt themselves above your word and say there is no God and that there are no God-given rights, we ask you to bring them to nothing. That you, I, we ask you to scramble their brains and scramble their plans, and that your judgment comes upon them in such a way that the whole world will know that we have called upon Yehovah, and you are the one that answers us. And just as you brought Moses back to the mountain after his time in Egypt and said to bring the people back to worship me at this mountain, when he came back to the mountain, then you proclaimed your name before him and said that 
This, Yehovah, is my memorial forever, that you brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand, that the whole world will know that your name is Yehovah, and so we are asking for your judgment to reign supreme, and that the exposure of evil in every corner, in every part of our government, in the legislative, judicial, and executive branch, we ask you for a full disclosure that your truth will be known in the name of Yeshua. Amen, amen. Shabbat shalom to our fans, Shavua Tov. See you next week, right here. This is the Jeremiah Generation.